Okay, and like I, you may have heard me say, um, 25 minutes goes way too fast. So this first part, I'm actually gonna skip over it a little bit and not go into a whole bunch of detail because it's fine. You don't need to know all this crazy stuff. So super quick background. Basically, I went to school in Alabama, in college in Alabama, got a degree, started my job here in Iowa at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. And I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Emily Baxter. I'm a child life specialist and I'm, I'm the child life programming specialist at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. So I get to do fun things like STEM pro presentations um, as part of my job. All right, so what in the world is a child life specialist? So we focus on the psychosocial aspect of hospitalization. What does that big word mean? That means that I'm not a nurse, I'm not the doctor. I'm not the one um, doing the medical procedures, but I am the one, uh, as you see my friend Maria there in the purple, I am the one sitting next to the child, helping them understand what's going on, helping them adapt to the hospital and um, you know, understand if they have a new diagnosis um, and just make the hospital more comfortable and less um, scary, less strange. So we use play and other forms of, of communication to reduce the stress on patients as well as families. So moms and dads and brothers and sisters. And then we target these interventions um, at natural childhood reactions to healthcare events. So to become a child life specialist, um, like I said, really briefly, I went to school, I got a four year degree in college. Um, so that's called an undergraduate degree or bachelor's. And um, during that time, you get some, you gain hours volunteering at a children's hospital. Um, typically you would have a child life practicum that would be part of your college education. So that's where you get to go observe what a child life specialist does. After you finish your education, your four years in college, then you do a 600 hour internship, which is typically it's 15 to 16 weeks. And that is where I learned everything. I mean, I learned all kinds of things, you know, in my books and my schooling, but the internship is where you're right there in a hospital working with a child life specialist and with patients. That's where you learn um, what to do. And then you have a certification exam, just like any other profession to become a certified child life specialist. So the foundation of everything we do is play, which seems so silly because what's the big deal with play, right? Well, if any of you have little brothers and sisters or you've started babysitting, um, you know that play comes super natural to children. Um, for instance, if you put uh, a lump of Play-Doh in front of a four-year-old, they're not gonna sit there and say, what is it? What do I do with it? <clears throat> they're going to immediately jump in to um, forming it, making a pie out of it, crushing it. Um, it's just a natural thing. We are born with that ability to play. So we want to use play in the hospital to, um, to teach and to do everything to make the hospital less scary. One thing that we really focus on is with babies in the hospital. It, well, I should say if a baby were at home, they would be learning how to do these simple things like, you know, shaking a rattle or having tummy time and, you know, looking around and, and working on those neck muscles. But when a baby's in the hospital, that's really hard to do. They have, you know, maybe it's a child who is having a heart surgery. So that kind of limits, you know, maybe there's a bandage here that limits the ability for the child to be on their stomach and do tummy time. So part of my job is to go in there and figure out different ways to help that child meet those developmental milestones, um, even while in the hospital. The other thing we focus on is normalization and socialization. So two big words, but basically just take the first part, normal and social. So making things as normal as possible, meaning when a child is in the hospital, we wanna make it, you know, we wanna allow them to do the things they would be doing at home. Um, so playing board games, playing video games, art projects, things like that. And then the social part of it, um, 
being in a hospital is, it can be kind of isolating because you're away from your classmates. Now, things are a little different nowadays with um, virtual schooling. So kids can still, but it actually makes it so that when you're in the hospital, you can still do virtual school with your class. So that's one thing that's good, I guess, about how we're, how we're doing education these days. Um, but it can still, it can be a place where it's hard to, um, hard to hang out with other kids your age. In the past, prior to COVID pandemic, um, we had group activities multiple times a day. So the kids who wanted to, they would join together in our playroom and they would, you know, it'd be a board game tournament or um, a cooking activity where they would make um, puppy chow uh, or craft activities. So that's been kind of difficult with um, COVID pandemic because um, we're not allowed to have the kids get together. Um, so they, they are kind of stuck in their rooms. So as you can see, this funny looking thing on the lower left there, so that's a robot. Um, and we have two of those in the hospital. So a patient using an iPad or phone or computer can drive the robot through the hospital. So this robot could be you know, on a totally different floor than them and they could drive it on a tour or maybe they could drive it to another patient's room to like hang out for a little bit. So that's been, it's a weird thing because who knew we were gonna have to do uh, robots and virtual school, things like that. But it's one way that we are um, trying to help with socialization while the kids are um, in the hospital. So the other part of my job, aside from that, you know, play, normalization, socialization, um, is helping with medical procedures. So anytime patients are getting a shot or a blood draw or an IV, um, I want to make it as less stressful as possible for those kids and families. So um, one of the main things is preparing patients for procedures. Um, as you can imagine, like I'm sure you've all had some sort of, um, you know, a shot, a vaccine, um, maybe a blood draw, maybe an IV. So something where you had to go to the doctor's office and get something that's not so pleasant, right? Um, so if you just went in there and you're like, you know, having fun, having fun and boom, they poke you in the arm with something, that's gonna be a little surprising and not so fun. So what we do as child life specialists is try to prepare those patients for what it might feel like, what they can do to make it go easier. And with shots, my number one is to take deep breaths. Like it relaxes all your muscles. And in that time that it takes you to take a deep breath, the shot is done and over with. Um, so that's, that's part of preparation is um, helping the child know what it might feel like what to do to help it go easier. And it also it gives them some control of um, what's happening to them. Okay, so medical play, this is one of my most fun things to do. And this is why I sent you guys um, those medical supplies. So we use medical play to help kids understand the different procedures that are happening to them. Um, so we use real stuff to become more familiar with it. Um, so it's not so scary. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get you back to, um, oops, sorry about that. Back to my Zoom here so you can see me uh, make this big. Okay, and I'm gonna turn this off real quick. Okay, that way you can see. I've got my friend here. This is my dolly that I brought with me. He's got his little mask and his little gown on. So I already went ahead and I put an IV in this doll. So you can see this tape, it's called Tegaderm that's holding the straw in place, the little tubing, and then I've got a syringe. So I can pull back on this. Let's see, kind of hard to see. Pull back on this for a blood draw or say I've got some medicine in there I need to give him. I can push the medicine in. So this is something I do with kids to help all this medical equipment not be so scary to help them understand why these things are used. So this is where you guys can do a little doctor, play a little doctor on your dolls or stuffed animals that you have in front of you. Um, you can use the Tegaderm to uh, put, 
put some stickers, band-aids on your elephant there, Maddox. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking, but I want you to, you can play while I talk. It's totally fine. I know when does a teacher ever tell you like, go ahead and play while I talk to you. I'm going to keep going because I do have a two minute video I want to show you about, um, it's, it's a real life, what the child life specialist is doing during procedures. So I'll skip to that. And then when that's done, we'll have some time for some questions. So let me go back to share screen. Do, do, do. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to play this and make sure you guys can hear it. And then I'll skip ahead to those just two minutes that I want to show you because it's a great video, but we just don't have time to watch 11 minutes of it. Okay, can everybody hear that music Sometimes going on? Sometimes children need to have medical tests or treatments that may hurt, such as getting an injection, having blood drawn. All right, I'm going to skip it ahead so we can watch the child life specialist, which some of these shots are me doing it, um, watch the child life specialist in action here. A few novel and engaging items or things to do. Choose items that are consistent with the child's developmental and functional abilities. For infants and toddlers, use singing or sounds, rhythmic gentle rocking or padding, or sensory toys that light up or vibrate. Toddlers might like engaging songs like Wheels on the Bus or books that make noises. For preschool children, choose distractors that involve the child in physical activity, such as blowing or popping bubbles, action books, and finger play games. Breathing games using a pinwheel or pretending to blow up an imaginary balloon are good to help young children relax. For school-aged children, silly toys, seek-and-find books, and novelty toys can keep their attention. They might like to be involved in guessing games, such as 20 questions. School-aged children can usually follow your instructions on deep breathing to help reduce distress. For teenagers, involve them in conversations about pets, sports, or books that bring up pleasant memories or calming images. For teens who don't want to converse, a squeeze ball or listening to their preferred music can be distracting. Older children may want to select their own distraction techniques, but may require prompting to focus on distraction during the procedure. Finally, Developmentally appropriate interactive video games or apps on a tablet or smartphone are specifically designed to capture and hold a child's attention. They can be used to engage toddlers to teenagers. Plan to have at least three distraction items or activities that you could use during the procedure. For children who have difficulty maintaining attention, have a few additional items to use if needed. Make sure you have ready access to the items before the procedure begins and place some distraction items out of the child's sight so that you can introduce something new if you lose the child's attention. Part of your planning should include asking the child if they would rather look away from the procedure or watch. If the child wants to look away, block the sight of the procedure by placing a book or tablet in the child's line of view. For children who want to watch, Plan on offering quick peeks and then redirect the child back to distraction. Note that. All right. So like I said, it's a really great video, um, but we just don't have time to show all of it. So hopefully that showed you um, a quick example of a child life specialist in action. All of those procedures were real procedures. So those were actual real pokes, um, but you can see the child, even the towards the end there, there was a young lady who was, you could see in her face that it was not, it wasn't comfortable, it was hurting, but she took a deep breath and kind of got through that pain and got her mind distracted. So it's amazing how much a little bit of deep breathing and something else to think about, uh, an iPad to look at or something else to get your mind off of it helps the procedure go much better. Um, I want to show you these pictures too. This is just a, something that um, a child life specialist advocates for. So we want to ensure that um, uh, trying to think what advocate. So just help the patient and family out. Um, as you might think, if you were a patient in a hospital bed, you know, you're laying there in the bed and there's all these big, you know, tall people over top of you, that's so scary and intimidating. So we want to make sure that um, whenever possible, 
to put the patient in an upright position. So you can see the little girls here on uh, mom or dad's lap. They are sitting or they're in like a hug position with mom there, the bottom right, um, to help the procedure go better because they're in a more comfortable position. It's um, not so intimidating and scary as if they were laying down. Um, we also focus on words, which is such a silly thing, but using um, encouraging words for patients. So even though we might think like saying, oh, good boy, good girl, you're doing great. I mean, not that those aren't good things to say, but instead of those phrases, what we do is we reinforce what they're doing correctly. So we might say, oh, you're taking really good deep breaths or thank you for holding still. It helps the child know what they're doing right and what they should continue to do. Um, so, oh, I already said those. Um, and we don't want to do any sort of blame, like when a procedure doesn't go well, because sometimes it doesn't, uh, maybe the needle, the IV doesn't go in where it's supposed to go in, but we don't ever blame the child for that. Um, and knowing that what works for one kid might not work for the next kid. So part of my job is being able to adapt to that. This is just a long list of different places that child life specialists work. So even in the school system or specialty camps, um, different doctor's offices. So I'm gonna take this off real quick. We're gonna go back to the screen so we can see each other. Um, and like I said, 25 minutes goes super fast, right? So we have five minutes left. Um, and I wanna have time for you guys to ask any questions. You can ask questions about what I talked about, what I do. If you have questions about what this medical equipment is, um, feel free to unmute yourself or welcome to put it in the chat. So who's got some questions for me? Maddox, I know you do. You got any questions about this medical equipment? What about this thing? What is this stretchy rubber band? I don't know about that, but I am more confused about like the weird blue thing here. The weird blue thing. Hey, that's, that is very interesting. Okay. It is a weird blue thing, but let me show you on my doll here. So this blue thing, it's called an arm brace. So if they've got an IV in, usually for a young kid, um, they use this as like a little pillow and it holds their arm. See how the Velcro just goes around their arm like that. Um, it just kind of keeps their arm secure so that they're not bending their arm um, and making the IV um, so it would not be in the right place. So it's just a pillow, just a way to keep their arm straight. And this is the tiniest one they make. So it's teeny tiny, just tiny enough for a doll or a newborn baby. I tied it around my elephant's ear, not sure what it was. You put it around your elephant's ear? <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. So what I do is I talk with patients and, and clear up some of these like things that they might not understand. They, maybe they have one of these on their arms and they don't understand what it's for. So that's part of my job is to explain like, okay, well, it's an arm board. It's just to keep your hand, your arm straight. No big deal. What other questions do you have? There's also the like, stick with the like green green foam at the end yes so mine just happens to be pink but this is used it's called a toothette or maybe you might hear it called like a sponge for mouth cares so all this is there's nothing in there but they dip it in a in water and they use it to clean um, inside a patient's mouth. Sometimes a patient's not able to eat or drink before a procedure. They have to have an empty belly. So they put some water on here just to moisten their mouth so it's not so dry. That's a great question. This is a really weird looking thing. <laughs> and that's really all the questions I have. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for me? I have a question. Okay. Um, have you ever had a child that like wouldn't cooperate with you? Yes, <laughs> I have. Um, as you can, as you can guess, a lot of things in the hospital aren't necessarily fun, um, but they're things that the patient has to do. So 
the thing that comes to mind is um, taking medicine. So um, sometimes a child might not want to take the medicine because it tastes bad or simply because they don't want to. There's so many things in the hospital that the nurses and doctors have to like do to the patient. Um, so medicine taking is kind of one thing that the patient can be like, nope, not going to open my mouth, but they really need that medicine. So they call me in there to work my magic. And sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I can't change the situation, but I can at least try to say, okay, so does the medicine taste bad? And if it tastes bad, well, let's figure out what we can do to make it taste better. Should we add chocolate syrup to it? Should we um, suck on some ice cubes first to numb your taste buds? Um, should we try to take it real quick and then drink some Sprite? Um, so just, I, my job is to try all these different tricks up my sleeve to see how I can make it better. But there's definitely times where, um, where we have to just kind of walk away, let everybody calm down and then try again. That's a great question. Once for me, I had to go to like an emergency room or something because, and I had to get a shot like in my hand. Yeah. Where the wrist is kind of like the fingers in between. And then like the same thing on your doll kind of, but instead of the, um, like, I had a bag attached to it. Okay. Yeah. So lots of, I mean, scary things. Um, let's see, I've got some chats in here. Um, how long have you been working for? So I started my job in 2007. So before you guys were born, right? Yeah, <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> um, so that's what, 13, 14 years ago. Um, how, does your job need a lot of patience? Yes. Um, I feel like I actually give more patience. So like I'm more able to be patient with my kids at work than my kids at home. <laughs> so um, my job has definitely taught me a lot of, a lot of patience. Yes, Emma. Yes, those sticker things. Okay, where's mine at? Okay, so this is called um, Tegaderm. And the nurse will use this, um, let's see, I've got one under here. I don't know if you can see it on my little friend, um, some Tegaderm on here. It's holding the little straw in place under the skin. And the reason it looks so funny, oh shoot, I think it's gonna get stuck to itself. Well, I was gonna show you that it has a clear window, but it's stuck to the backing. But it has this clear window here so the nurse can see the child's skin to see if there's, um, you know, if it's getting swollen or getting red, they wanna keep an eye on that because that, that's something they don't want to happen once they place the IV. So it's a great question. It's basically a Band-Aid, you know, it's just a Band-Aid to hold that straw in place. It just looks funny, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, we're kind of at time now, but I don't wanna cut you off if you have any other questions. Anybody else? Hi. Hi, Maddox. <laughs> so I had a question here from Abby. What is the hardest part of your job and what's the best part? So the hardest part is um, seeing a child having a hard time, you know, seeing a child having pain. Um, that's the hardest part. But then the best part is um, teaching them some coping techniques. So my favorite part is when I go in for a procedure, let's say it's a shot and I teach the child how to take those deep breaths. And when the shot's over, they're like, I didn't even feel that. As soon as I took my deep breath, it was over. So that's my favorite part is when a child learns how to master um, a coping technique. Great question. All right, guys, I've already kept you two minutes too long. So I'm gonna let you go so you can get on to your next um, session. I believe it starts at 12. And um, that medical stuff is yours to play doctor and to um, explore. And if you want more information about a child life specialist, there's a really easy website. It's just childlife.org. So childlife.org, that is our national association. 
So that will give you some more information and show you some more pictures and videos too. All right. Okay. Enjoy your next session. Learn a lot. <laughs> Bye.